I can't tell the difference between my waking life and dreams. Day and night. It must be very difficult. The voice is in my mind, my in your head. There's chaos in you. Embrace it. Welcome back, everyone. This will be my new Marvel Moon Knight trailer video for the Super Bowl. They released a bunch of brand new footage, so we'll break it down. If you're brand new to the channel, there are a bunch of Super Bowl trailers that I'm still working through right now. I'll do videos for everything. Be sure to subscribe to get them. There was even a second Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness trailer video after the Super Bowl that I'll do a separate video for on Tuesday as well, with a bunch of different footage, like Zombie Doctor Strange and Zombie Scarlet Witch. That's right, more zombies in the MCU after What If. And everybody's still freaking out about Patrick Stewart, Professor X, coming back. Welcome to the MCU, X-Men. Mild shock. But in the brand new Moon Knight trailer footage, we actually get more of Ethan Hawke's villain character, now confirmed to be the Dr. Arthur Harrow character from the early Moon Knight comic book stories. I'll explain what's going on with his character because they're making a couple changes from the comics. He was a little bit different in those old stories. But the showrunners said that they pitched the story for Moon Knight as Indiana Jones in the MCU. So they're going for a lot of biblical artifact references here like Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, Last Crusade with the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy Grail, except that we're just dealing with Egyptian mythology, Egyptian artifacts. Although if you haven't seen my other Moon Knight videos, I explain what's going on with Khonshu. He presents himself like the Egyptian god of the moon, and that's the way they're building him in the MCU here. But secretly in the comics, he's actually one of the old gods just pretending to be the Egyptian god of the moon. He's actually way, way older and way more powerful. He comes from a pantheon of elder gods that ruled over the MCU universe millions of years ago. If you think about Earth's history, you talk about the Eternals movie, when culture started to rise up, the Egyptian culture was formed and they started worshipping their gods, he just presented himself to them as the Egyptian god of the moon. Like, oh, they're looking for gods to worship, I'll just present myself, seems like an opportunity here. There's actually a scene in the trailer where you see this purple lightning coming down from the sky into this pyramid here. That actually might be the scene where Moon Knight is getting his powers, becoming the avatar for Khonshu. When he's outside in the field of grass here in this black shirt and brown jacket, that seems like his original Mark Spector mercenary personality. He's got some Egyptian artifact. Khonshu surprises him, just showing up behind him to give him some orders. Usually Khonshu only appears to him when he wants him to do something. He's a very capricious god, like he'll just switch his moods on a dime. He's not a benevolent figure either, like he's not a loving god. He only makes a deal with Mark Spector to save his life because he wants something from him. Like, oh, I see an opportunity here. I need somebody on Earth to execute my will because he himself is physically stuck in a pocket dimension outside of the main MCU. He's incredibly powerful, but he can't actually physically enter the MCU, so that's why he needs an avatar to execute his will. And at least initially, it's all about Khonshu getting revenge against people, other gods that he hates. In most of the Moon Knight stories, Khonshu really hates the other gods. We're going to meet a lot of the gods of the MCU inside Thor Love and Thunder, especially the ones that we've only heard about but haven't seen yet. Like, for instance, there's a rumor that we're actually going to see Bost, the panther god that Black Panther and his people worship where he gets his powers from, inside Thor Love and Thunder. The whole idea that Gore the God Butcher is going around killing gods of the MCU. So it's a really easy opportunity for them to present a bunch of gods that you've heard about in the MCU but you've never actually seen on screen before. Not gods in the sense of the Celestials, like the Eternals talk about the Celestials, Ershin, the Judge, the other Celestial host as if they are gods, but they're really just ultra-powerful cosmic beings, which aren't the same thing as actual gods. The way they're playing with the voiceover dialogue at the beginning of the trailer too, like you see him when Kanchu appears behind him, he's in his Mark Spector persona, but the voiceover dialogue is him doing that weird accent as Stephen Grant in the different personality. Most of the last trailer was him in the Stephen Grant persona, which is like a little bit of Mark Spector. Mark Spector is the mercenary, he's his original personality, like he came up through the military, then he became a mercenary. Then he became Moon Knight, and then the other personalities were developed, but they might play it in a slightly different way during the Moon Knight series. 
The way the synopsis for the show reads, it actually sounds like a Rashomon type of story the way they tell it. Like you actually meet the Stephen Grant personality, but then throughout the course of the story, he finds out that that's not the real original personality. And then he starts to question it. Like in the last trailer where the woman calls him on the phone and calls him by his Mark Spector name, and he doesn't know who that is. Like, wait a minute, who's Mark? Who are you talking to? My name's Stephen Grant. This scene in the bathroom is him looking in the mirror and seeing his Mark Spector personality staring back at him. Like the slightly crazier one seems like the Stephen Grant one. The one that seems more sure of himself, more hardcore, is the Mark Spector mercenary personality. So when he actually becomes Moon Knight, like when the costume unfurls around him, usually in the comics, that's Mark Spector Moon Knight, like the original personality. Although they just revealed another personality from the comics, the Mr. Knight persona. You may have seen that picture in your feeds in the last couple of days. When he's wearing the white suit and tie version of his costume here, like he almost seems like Deadpool in this scene. This is Mr. Knight, and it's a personality that was created relatively recently in the comics by Warren Ellis. And when he's in this personality, he's usually consulting with local police officers, being a detective, just solving crimes, which is what it seems like he's doing in this scene here. On the TV show, in these episodes, I don't know if they're actually going to present this as if it's the actual separate Mr. Knight personality, or if he'll just go back to being Mark Spector when he's like this. Like, if they're going to simplify it and only do a couple of the personalities. Because right now, it only seems like they're doing two different personalities, Mark Spector and Stephen Grant. But there might be a couple surprises. Explaining a little bit more about Ethan Hawke's villain character. So Arthur Harrow in the comics was from the early Moon Knight stories. He wasn't a huge character, but based on the trailer footage, they changed the character a little, making him a little more supernatural. In the original comics, he was this former Nazi scientist who suffered from a condition that left him paralyzed on his left side and in constant pain. In his field of study, like he was a scientist for the Nazis, was in pain itself. So you kind of get his motivation, like he's in constant pain, he starts studying pain, trying to find a way to control it. He does all these illegal experiments, he gets in a bunch of trouble, but then later he shows up as a Moon Knight villain, doing more illegal experiments in pain on different people. Now Ethan Hawke's version of the character on the TV show is wielding all these Egyptian artifacts. You see him wielding something with a bunch of energy coming out of it, like it seems like his walking cane that he uses, he walks around with all the time, is an Egyptian artifact that allows him to wield some special power. It seems like he understands kind of what's going on with Moon Knight, maybe he knows a little bit more about his connection with Khonshu than he lets on. He might be after some of the similar god-tier power that Moon Knight has as a result of his connection with Khonshu. And then this sort of escalates to the Indiana Jones Nazis kind of place, in the way that in those movies you have Nazis searching for biblical artifacts to give them some sort of god-tier power. Except in Moon Knight we're talking about Egyptian artifacts, but you get the reference. Ethan Hawke's villain character is this evil scientist searching for Egyptian artifacts to give him power. Early theory, they might be combining some of his storyline from the comics with the Sun King arc, who is a character that gains similar god-tier powers from the god that's Khonshu's father, Amun-Ra. There's a bunch of different gods in the Egyptian pantheon, so he could be stealing god-tier power from any one of those gods. There's a big action scene with him taking out a bunch of what seem like Arthur Harrow, Ethan Hawke's character's goons here in the black suits at this big estate. You actually get to see him in action wielding some of his main weapons. Those are the crescent darts. They're like his version of batarangs. They're like his trademark weapon. Because there's so much crazy crossover energy between different franchises happening in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, you have all this Fox Marvel stuff coming in through the multiverse, Fantastic Four, X-Men Easter eggs. I know there are a lot of questions about what Moon Knight is going to be crossing over with in the movies because it's a little bit darker, more supernatural, like the Doctor Strange movies. The only thing I've heard up to this point is that there are rumors that it's going to have a connection with the Blade Marvel movie, with Mahershal Ali's Blade movie, and thus Eternals, Kit Harington's Black Knight character. Because they are much darker characters in the MCU, and it sounds like Kevin Feige is doing a darker team-up in the background. Like on one level, you have the Avengers movies where a bunch of the big A-list characters cross over for really big WTF problems. We have the Marvel Netflix shows with the Defenders where you have street-level people teaming up to deal with street-level problems. Now that we have all these darker supernatural characters coming to the MCU, or new versions coming to the MCU, it sounds like Kevin Feige is building a darker team up, like Marvel Hearts of Darkness or Midnight Suns, something in that vein. So there might be some references and connections to that, especially the Blade movie at the end of the Moon Knight series. But that's about it, it's a pretty short trailer. If you spotted any of the big Easter eggs in it that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. I'll link my other Moon Knight trailer video at the end of this too, with a bunch of different footage. Like I said, I'll do a video for that other second Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness trailer video with the different footage tomorrow. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. Everyone click here for my video for that first big trailer with all the X-Men Professor X footage in it. 
and click here for my other big Moon Knight trailer video with all the different footage. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.